and organizing. I was wondering if you could uh, cover the Freedom Cells idea again and uh, how that has evolved and, and could be used by folks um, uh, in, in the here and now. Yeah, thanks again <clears throat> for the opportunity. So uh, I'll just start with Freedom Cells. So Freedom Cells is a concept that I first heard about in 2015 from a uh, colleague, John Bush, who um, I work closely with on a number of different projects involving decentralization, you know, freedom, volunteerism, all these kinds of intersecting concepts. But particularly, John started um, promoting the idea of freedom cells in 2015 after he heard from uh, Bob Podolsky, who's another author who wrote a book called Flourish. And he was working with another gentleman further who basically kind of their work focused around the number eight and why they thought group size and group dynamics would be good, ideal at the number eight or in that range, seven to nine people. And they, you know, they, their work was more focused on the, um, the sociology and the kind of psychology behind that idea. And John was just inspired by that, that idea, the number eight, and then organizing in small groups. And so he started talking about uh, doing this in Texas. I went to a meetup where he talked about the Central Texas Mutual Aid Society, and I was really inspired by it. That was late 2015, early 2016, and then I started promoting it. And it's just grown and grown and grown since that time. So, you know, what the heck is a freedom cell? Freedom cell, as we explain it, is a decentralized group of ideally eight people who are focused on skill sharing, knowledge sharing, knowledge sharing. It could be, you know, prepping in that way, like getting, you know, storing food, growing food. Uh, in some cases, that does lend itself towards people wanting to buy land and homestead and things like that. Uh, but ultimately, it's a decentralized concept. It's just that idea of local decentralized organizing around groups of eight, you know, don't wait till you have eight. If you got two people, start with that. But this is supposed to be your trusted kind of circle that you know in times of need, like right now, you can lean on and, and support each other, whether that means collaborating on projects together, again, trading, bartering your goods. And so that's kind of the, the first, what John calls the inner cadre when you're building your first original cell. The idea in the long term is that as these cells we've also heard people call them circles hubs hives mutual aid groups just you know simply whatever you want to call it the point is just focused on decentralized organizing and uh the, the goal is that as this network of decentralized groups grow that we could start to become more interconnected and you end up with what john sometimes refers to as like the middle cadre so if you have each individual first joining a cell in their local area as things start to grow things get even more localized maybe you end up with eight groups of eight across a certain part of town or a certain city that's 64 people that's a lot of power and as that grows in areas everywhere it starts to become a parallel network that can collaborate can organize can trade etc and so we've been talking about this concept since back then 2015 2016 there's a website freedomcells.org which is just a simple pretty bare bones <laughs> finally functional website that allows people to create a free profile and the main purpose of it is not to be another social network but for people to join to put what their interests are what their skills are and then to use the member maps and the cell maps to search and find people or find groups near them and i'm think i'm happy to say that before COVID-19 happened, we probably had 2,000 people on the website and, you know, people who've heard about the concept, but now there's over 30,000 people on the website. There's probably 10,000 plus more organizing via Telegram who are part of the kind of free themselves movement broadly and who are organizing groups as far as Portugal, Australia, across Europe. There's a lot more freedom cells popping up here in Mexico, both English speaking freedom cells and Spanish speaking freedom cells. So COVID was really just this big igniter to get a lot of people realizing that they need to get their shit together and freedom cells is one of the expressions of that obviously we're not the only people focused on solutions but i am happy to say that not only with that growth but now i've heard from people who they met each other through the freedom cell network and now they have bought land together or they're growing food together or they pulled their kids out of school together or you know they are investing in crypto or they're learning you know they're degoogling their phones you know all kinds of really practical concrete steps which to me are the only things that are going to lead us towards liberation is is actual steps like that so it's been really cool to see not only just growth in numbers but growth in people who are you know not every group is taking it serious i think some of them just evolve into being groups where people end up doing the same old thing just talking about politics but the people who really really get it and are practicing it are ha are finding value in it and that's really exciting to me